We are back with another great episode of Main Street Randyland and the wonderful world of Randy. All those great fun stories about stuff that I've saved and preserved for all generations yet to be seen and part of your history growing up on the Jersey Shore or going to Walt Disney World in Florida. But you know, you're not going to see it all if you don't press that subscribe button. You know the deal, you got to press the subscribe button. If you don't press the subscribe button, you're not subscribed. You don't get to see all the stuff. So do it now. That way you don't miss out. But after you've done it, you can come back. Don't leave, you know, leave off where you left off. Come back. Okay, you ready? All right, here we go. Now I'm going to tell you about the Palace Amusements in Asbury Park, New Jersey way ahead of its time, before there were any family fun centers, and that word F-E-C, I hate that word F-E-C, it stands for Family Entertainment Center. There were no such things. You went to the boardwalk, you found an arcade, the boardwalk was the whole thing. But in Asbury Park, in the late 1800s, a place opened called the Palace Amusements really, really special. Not even on the boardwalk, across the street from the boardwalk, across from Wesley Park. Started with a merry-go-round and then they expanded and they eventually took over the whole block, going this way and that way, a square block. Do you know it goes back so far that the carousel and the Ferris wheel were steam-powered and they got their steam from the, the sewer and electric plant in, in the city of Asbury Park. The pipes went under the street and went over to the palace to, to energize this Ferris wheel and this merry go It's all really, really amazing. Of course, during my era, it wasn't steam driven anymore. They changed that to electric motors. But just the fact that it was steam driven, it really blows your mind. Now, <clears throat> the Ferris wheel went through the roof of the amusement center. You know, there were no big arcades or amusement. This was an indoor place. You could go down there in the winter and you could have fun time. The Ferris wheel went through the roof with these big enclosed cars. The merry-go-round had one of the old ring machines on it. You don't see them much today. If you see them anywhere, it's like really, you got a ring machine? But they were special. I'm gonna tell you about that in a minute, but I wanna tell you more about the palace. They had a bumper car ride inside. They had some other, you know, boardwalk type rides like the Scrambler and the Whip. They had them inside the building. Two dark rides, pretzel dark rides, one of which was a double decker one with the chain lifts to pull you up, <clears throat> and then the alley-oop in the middle with the free flowing alley-oop, and then the chain to lower you down made by pretzel and they had a walking fun house with the most amazing gadgets the, the spiral staircase that took you up that was on springs and it bounced as you're walking the turning discs that you would step on it would move you the sliding boards the air that would blow up underneath your feet as you step on them. they had all the good stuff the turning barrel the slide not to mention all the monsters that were hiding inside as you'd walk by and you'd step on a part of the floor that was you know detect your pressure and the monster would light up with a big monster and give you a big monster big monster smile <laughs> <laughs> but it was an amazing place. And one of the things that was really special was that merry-go-round. It was a Mengel's merry-go-round. Now, technically, I guess you would say it was a carousel because a merry-go-round is with many different type of things on it. A carousel is with horses. So this is all with horses. So technically it would be a carousel, but they called it a merry-go-round. So everybody knows what a merry-go-round is. Little details here, but the Mengels merry-go-round. Mengels made different rides for amusement parks back in the day. They made a big whip. They made a little whip and a big whip that would whip the car around. They made really good rides. But the Mengels merry-go-round, what was different? Very interesting. It was a fast merry-go-round. Now, typically, I don't like fast-moving rides. I don't like roller coasters that turn you upside down and go backwards and all these crazy things. That's not necessary. But a merry-go-round typically goes around. The horse just goes up and down and up and down. And you can only go so fast because you don't want to throw the people off of the horse with centri centrifugal force. But Mengel's 
figured out something really ingenious. So when you've got the floor and you've got the pole and the pole goes through the hole of the flange, it holds the horse vertically as it's being cranked on the top. But Mengels put the flange holes on the bottom on a shift that would slide out. So as the merry-go-round picked up speed, the, the bottom flange would move out and the pole, instead of going vertically, would turn like this and go like this. So you couldn't get thrown off of the horse as easily because the horse, instead of staying straight and you're getting thrown off, the horse would move out. So you're kind of going up and down at an angle on the thing. Really interesting. But in doing so, they made it even more special for the ring machine. Now the ring machine <laughs> was a big deal on merry-go-rounds back in the day before people got all whiny and crying babies. Oh, I got a little pussy scratch on my hand. Ring machines were found on carousels and merry-go-rounds and they had an arm that stuck out like this with their claw at you. And in that claw was a ring made of metal and they were usually about two inches large. The premise was, as you're riding by on the merry-go-round, the arm would be sticking out towards the merry-go-round and you'd reach over from your horse, stick your finger in the ring, and pull it out of the claw, which was springed. You'd pull it out and you'd have it in your hand. You physically took the ring out of the ring machine. And every ride, one, only one of the rings would be brass colored gold. If you got the gold ring, you typically got a free ride on the merry-go-round. I'm sure there were places that had maybe a bigger bone or something like that, you know, win some kind of dish set on a special. But the typical prize for getting the gold ring was you got a free ride on the merry-go-round. So people going around, and each time they'd go around, they'd see it coming, they'd lean forward, and they'd grab the rings, grab the rings out of the ring machine and go around again. Now at the other side of the merry-go-round, usually not directly the other side, a little further than the other side, there'd be a big wooden bin, and it would say, throw rings here. So as you went around, you had these rings in your hand, you'd throw them into the bin. They'd bounce off the wall and fall down there, and they'd reuse the rings. So most people would grab one ring each time they went around. But then, of course, you had the people who were cocky and arrogant, and they would try to grab two, three, four, or more rings on one spin. How do you do that? Well, if the arm is coming and you're on the horse, you lean forward so you can get an extra grab. You grab the ring, but meanwhile you're moving. Now the arm's here, you grab again, you're moving, you grab again, you grab again. So you get grab, grab, grab as you're passing by. So they would try to increase their odds of getting that gold ring. Ultimately, what would happen? people fall off the merry-go-round. They try to get the ring, being a jerk, hanging off real far, to, and, blah, 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 and they fall, and they go rolling off the merry-go-round, rolling into the side fence or something like that. And back in my day, and I saw it happen, usually the younger guys or the, even, even the older men into their 50s, they would fall off, go rolling, and you'd say to yourself, oh my God, they'd get up there, their pants are scuffed up, maybe they got a ripped, ripped pants, they'd have, you know, some, some scratch, scrape with blood, you know, a little bit of blood, and they'd feel stupid because people were watching and they'd be you know, laughing and oh my gosh and they'd feel up and they'd dust themselves off and they'd limp away probably with broken bones and all stuff like this because they didn't want to appear stupid for falling off the merry-go-round. So people didn't hurry up and run for their lawyer. Where can I get the lawyer? Where is he? Oh, call the ambulance. Call the ambulance. They brushed it off and they got up and they got back on the merry-go-round and probably did it again getting more rings on the thing. So this is pretty interesting but when the palace closed in 1988, I sent four tractor trailers and I have purchased, and they're still in storage all these years, their bumper car ride, both of their dark rides, monsters from the fun house, some games, some signs, some artifacts, test equipments, all kinds of stuff. But I got the ring machine. I wasn't able to save the carousel. It got sold off. They sold the horses off for antique value and got over a million dollars at auctions for single horses. And they sold the machine to somebody else, another park that put fiberglass horses on it. I, I believe it was running since. I'm not sure if it's still running, but it was running. But I have 
the ring machine because that was special. I remember as a kid, I saved a couple rings because I felt that was such a special prize. It didn't matter if it was the brass one, and they didn't even use brass when I was a kid. They used the metal ones, they painted them gold, you know, because I guess the brass rings cost money. But I had a few, but now, I have a couple cases of them because when I bought the ring machine, I got the rings. So actually, I'll tell you a secret, there's two and a half ring machines. They had more than one because if one broke, they had an auxiliary, so they had a second ring machine. And then the third one, over the years, they cannibalized for parts, so there was only like half of it left. But I got them all. I have the two and a half ring machines, and here's one of them right up top here. Now, you'll notice on the right side, that chain that goes from bottom to top, that has two prongs on each side, and that would go down into that gray bin on the bottom where the operator would pour rings into it, and it would catch rings on those prongs carry them up to the top and it would load the arm from the very top of the machine that would then have a whole line of rings going all the way down to that front claw. That front claw is spring loaded and it doesn't allow the rings to come through without somebody putting their finger through the ring and giving it a pull. When you pull it, the ring comes out because it's, you're pulling it stronger than the springs are and you got the ring. So each ride, the operator would release one golden ring to mix into the rings of the, the display. You see how the top there, that piece that's sticking out, well from the other side that holds about seven brass colored rings and the operator would pull a lever to release one of those rings which would then mix into at random all the other rings which are lined up going down the arm. Eventually it would make its way down to the claw and whoever got it would get a free ride on the merry-go-round unless they fell off and went flying into the fence of course. Great things like this are part of the amusement history that once were. We still remember them because those of us who were around to experience it have those memories. Those who never got to experience it can experience it here because we're keeping it alive through our preservation efforts in making these videos right here on the Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. So you can watch it and be sure to press that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next episode or the episode after that. It's really easy to do. I think you can do it. Push subscribe so you help us continue to bring these amazing episodes from the wonderful world of Randy. It's Main Street Randy Land and we'll see you next time with the next fun-filled episode. Bye guys.